Mark chapter 10, verses 18 on to verse 22. The title of this video is going to get your attention. And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. And of course, the rich young ruler did not see, didn't have the eyes to see that Jesus is God the Father. He didn't have eyes to see that Jesus is the Mashiach. Okay? Thou knowest the commandments. Because the young, the rich young ruler is like, what thing can I, must I do? Uh, uh, verse 17. And when he was gone forth into the way, there came one running and kneeled to him and asked him, Good master, what, sh what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? Let's pick up at verse 19. Thou knowest the commandments. Do not commit adultery, do not kill, do not steal, do not bear false witness, defraud not, honor thy father and mother. And he answered and said unto him, Master, all these have I observed from my youth. Then Jesus beholding him, loved him, and said unto him, One thing thou lackest. That's love. That's love to tell you that one thing that you lack. That's love. When someone gets a hold of you, talking about how they want to eat a bullet, drink Drano, drive their car into a, what, what, a, a ditch or whatever, while emailing you. Why not uh, looking up at the ceiling at the rafters, considering whether or not they will hold your weight? Or getting a firearm and pointing your loaded firearm at a peace officer. They call it suicide by cop. Or the horrendous pull the plug on me. How easy it is to deny the pain of someone else's suffering, right? Quest to die with dignity. What was that guy's name? Kevorkian? Assisted suicide? Hmm. A request to die with dignity. Hmm. Then Jesus beholding him loved him and said unto him, One thing thou lackest, go thy way, sell whatsoever thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come, take up the cross, and follow me. And he went, and he was sad at that saying, and went away grieved, for he had great possessions. The point of looking at this was, one thing thou lackest. When someone comes to you with the serious notion of chomping on a bullet, drinking drain, or jumping out of a plane, or whatever you can think of, uh, making minced meat out of your wrists. The last thing that you, as a saint, now, we are going to be talking about this from the vantage point of the saint. But for any of you who will click on this, you need to consider something. See, when the thought of you taking what you claim is your life into your hands, you know what you're doing? I will tell you. I will not tell you. Excuse me. The scripture will tell you. The Lord, through this vessel, will tell you. You know what you're doing? Isaiah 14, verses 13 and 14. For thou hast said in thine heart, 
I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. You're taking it upon yourself to hasten something that, you know, that most likely, most likely, I say most likely because you never know when your time is up. You never know when your time is up. It is, in my opinion, the ultimate act of selfishness when you decide to take your life and see here's the thing that you need to consider dear friend whoever you are if you are not saved you think what you are facing now is horrendous. And hey, hey, I'm, I'm going to speak with you plain. Can you handle that? Can you handle that? Life more often than not sucks, doesn't it? Doesn't it, right? Things happen. People betray you. Yeah, contrary to what evolutionists and atheists want you to believe, mankind is not getting better. Only an idiot could see this and think that things are getting better. And then when you couple that, that with Satan showing you the world in a moment of time, online and looking at things, hmm? Hmm? yes, but see, here's what you need to understand. No matter what you're going through, and, and hey, 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 I, I, I get it, man. I, I understand. I don't mind. I'm not wearing your shoes. I'm not. But I wear a shoe, but a different type of shoe in a different circumstance. Okay. If you're not saved, you think you got problems now. And see, that's the lie. It will all your pain and suffering will end when you pridefully, in the guise of your father the devil, because you see the wind boisterous. The world and the problems are bigger than the little G God that you have made him out to be. Oh, yeah. See, that's the thing. You make God the Father into a little G God and exalt yourself. And then when things, circumstance of the world comes around and swipes your feet out from under you and you realize you see your own wretchedness. You can't take it. So, my, at least my son, listen, pal, listen to me. There's a, see, a lot of people like to deflect the reality of hell. And there are some guys like that idiot Andy is his name. Um, he used to have a golfing thing. Uh, golfing channel. Uh, he used to, uh, he teaches that when a person goes to hell, that they can have, they can repent in hell and get out of it. That he, that's Catholic teaching. Okay. In order to avoid the thought of the reality of hell, you diminish it because you see your world, your problems bigger than the unescapable problem of hell. You're not saved. 
and you're going to decide to eat a bullet, jump out of an airplane, do whatever you're going to do to kill yourself because this is too much for you? <laughs> you have no idea. You have no idea where their worm dieth not and the fire is never quenched. Now see, Roman Catholicism will interject onto you that the actual act of suicide in and of itself will put you in hell. That the actual act. Um, if you're not saved, if the Lord does not save you, that is what's going to put you in hell. That you rejected his salvation. That's what's going to put you in hell. Okay? Do you realize that nothing you do besides reject the gospel is what's going to put you in hell? You decide to kill yourself and you're not a saint, you're going to go to hell. And you think your problems are bad now. And, saints, you have to resist when someone, if you have ever been given the opportunity to talk to someone who is, you know, is playing around with a revolver, give me a reason why I shouldn't. Okay? You're not saved. And you think you've got problems now, you go ahead and you put that gun in your mouth and you pull that trigger, you're going to be in hell in something a million times worse than you could ever possibly imagine. You don't want to believe that. By the time you become a firm believer in hell, that, that's, that hell exists as well as heaven, you take that selfish, self-centered action and it will be too late for you. And see, we have to, when it comes to something like this, saints, brethren, we have to avoid the kind of passive approach. You don't be a jerk or anything like that, but you, I mean, when, when you are faced, when someone gets a hold of you, over your health phone, through the email, or whatever, I am going to shoot myself. I'm going to drive my car into a ditch and hopefully be jettisoned out the windshield or have my chest cavity crushed or whatever. You know what the worst thing you could do? God loves you. God's not mad at you. It's angry, but they think God's not mad at you. God wants the best for your life. someone comes to you in that position you need to uh, make them aware okay <laughs> um, if you're not saved and you decide to do the stupid selfish self-centered action of taking your own life you're going to pro your problems are just beginning and you and I as saints, we have to avoid Isaiah 30, verses 8, on to verse 11. Now go, write it before them in a table, and note it in a book, that it may be for the time to come forever, that this is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law of the Lord, which say to the seers, see not. And to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things. Speak unto us smooth things. Prophesy deceits. Get you out of the way. Turn aside out of the path. Cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from, uh, from before us. What good, what, you know, you're not saved. And you're going to, you're going to end your life. You're going to kill yourself. 
Your problems are just going to be your your problems are just beginning. You have no idea, and by the time you find out, it'll be too late. Some have compassion, making a difference. Others save with fear, pulling them out to the fire. The worst thing you can. God loves you. God's not angry at you. God has a plan for your life. And he does. But see, the way Christianity pacifies it. Now, you don't go into these situations as a bull in the china shop. But when you are, when you are approached with uh, someone, you know, who, <laughs> well, I just believe and receive. Uh, I'm not that bad. I'm not as bad as so-and-so. False convert. Okay? Well, listen. Are you saved? Now, already 15 minutes in, you've already noticed that I'm making a distinction between a lost and a saved individual. Okay? You're not saved. You think you're saved because you're a Calvinist or a Roman Catholic or one of these stupid, uh, sleazy, believist heretics. Okay? You think, you're, you're, you think you are, but you are actually not. Okay? And whatever happens... You come in contact with a saint within these desperate moments of yours, and that saint's like, Dude, <laughs> are you saved? Huh? Are you really? Are you aware of the consequence of what if you're not? Hmm? What if you're not? You've been told just to believe and receive. You've been told repentance is a work. Calling on the name of the Lord is a work. You've been told because of your skin color or your demographic that you're an elect. And whatever the consequences, whatever the circumstances, you're going to go ahead and consider taking your own life? Listen, it doesn't matter what you believe about this if you are lost and you do the ultimate act of selfishness and take your own life your your problems have just begun and there's no end you have no idea but now the contrast a saint a saint. Bar none. Suicide is the ultimate act of selfishness. And for a saint who considers it, who's bigger? God, our Father, or your problems? And we see, when you're considering ending your own life as a saint, you're making the world your problems bigger than God. First Corinthians. Now, this we're going to answer this. Scripture is going to answer this because here's the fact, and we're going to we're going to go into Scripture to see this. Here's the fact: if you are saved, a saint of the Church of the Living God, you came to the Lord His way. His way, the elected way of the cross, and He saves you. You are once saved, always saved, eternally secure. You selfishly, selfishly taking your life does not mean you lose His salvation, or else we have a problem. Okay? So then you might be dead. Well, then hey, if that be the case, why not? First Corinthians chapter 6, verses 12 on to verse 20. Read along with me. Read along with me. Hey, saint, you're going through some stuff, huh? You're going through some stuff? Yeah, you're going to be in heaven. 
Sure. Yes, you will be. But do you want the Lord to be ashamed of you for all eternity? Well, you see all your brethren over there adoring the Lord Jesus. And then there's you. That's better than hell. Of course. But see, and see, that's where the heretics, that's where the devils come in. While all the while offering you another Jesus and a false gospel. Okay? How would you like to, for eternity, have the Lord to be ashamed of you? Ashamed of you also, keep this in mind, dear saints, that the reason why you're up there is because you took it upon yourself because you saw the world and your problems bigger than the Lord who's right there. Have you, have you thought about that yet? You don't see a way out. So you selfishly take a way out. The Lord, who made heaven and earth, who can do anything, raise the dead. Imagine that. What? Your problems were too big for you? Your problems are big. Anything too hard for me? Have you, have you put the brakes on yet and thought of that? 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 12 and verse 20. They go to verse for these people who want to justify yoking themselves up with the Vatican. King James Bible believing Christians. All things are lawful unto me. God's a, unless you, you, you know the God of Calvinism... Um, God is not a God of coercion. You have to make the right decisions. All things are lawful unto me. You can do anything that a lost person can do. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. The consequences are the things that a lot of you aren't considering. Or don't want to. But yes, you can. And that is undisputed. That is that is undisputable. But, you, get, you know what you do? You get, you get your little pen, and you circle that but, and you get yourself one of these, and you put that there. Cir circle that a couple times, brother. Okay? But, all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, I will not be brought under the power of any. Look, I've been there myself. But in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, how are you going to look the Lord in the eye and say to him, my problems were bigger than you, I thought. Think about that. Think, stop and think about that. Every, we're going to look at this. Every one of us is going to give an account of ourselves to God. Now granted, I'd hate to be you behind me at the judgment seat of Christ. <laughs> Absolutely. I'd hate to be the one that's behind me. Because it's going to take a while. <laughs> okay. And you're going to hear like, Oh, Fred, you really? Oh, that, we're all going to go through that. Okay. We're all, we are all going to go through that. You know where it's like, the, the thing about, the, you know, I gave you ten talents, and this guy did that, and this guy did that. And then the one guy, he, he took the talent and hit it, and he's like, I knew that you were a hard and a stir man. So here, here's that. Hmm. Saints, are you, do you really, are you really prepared to look the Lord in the eye at the judgment seat of Christ and say, number one, as a saint, that my problems were bigger than you. Oh. Have you, have you, have you stopped and thought about that? Well, I'm going to be... 
So apparently, see, and think about this. The mindset of someone that goes to that to justify. Yes, of course, being in... Then of course. But does the honor of our Lord mean anything to you? Hmm? What does the Lord mean to you? You're going to tell the Lord to his face that I'm here because, you know, my problems were bigger than I thought you were. And you weren't doing anything. Oh, boy. And see, this is the appropriate way to deal with this when this is presented to you. Because when you go to someone who is in that frame of mind, in that state, with the God loves you, oh, don't worry about it, they're just going to continue to justify anything. I will not be brought under the power of any. The power of your problems, huh? Yea, hath God said. Where's your God, huh? Doesn't your God love you and look at you? Meats for the belly, and the belly for meats. But God shall destroy both it and them. Now the body is not for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. Okay? And God hath both raised up the Lord, and will also raise up us by his own power. Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ? Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost that lives within you. Okay? Now, again, context here is talking about the physical fornication, but there is more than just physical fornication. Okay, we've, we've talked about that before. Okay? But you also got to remember, a harlot is mentioned here. And you tie that in with Proverbs chapter 7. Who is the mother of harlots? Who, when you are wanting to eat a bullet, is going to come to you with the, Oh, God loves you. Don't worry. It's okay. The one who speaks to you smooth things. The ones who speak to you like a dragon. Or a devil, I should say. Let's continue. Shall I then take the members of Christ... And make them the members of an harlot, God forbid. Now, yes, context is addressing, yes. But it is more so than just relegated to that. Members of an harlot. Who catches you with an impudent face and kisses you. This day I have, my, I have brought peace offerings with me. I have uh, paid my vows. I have perfumed my bed with myrrh, aloes, and cinnamons, with tapestries from Egypt, the coverings of Egypt, of the world. What? Know ye not that he which is joined to an harlot is one body, for two, saith he, shall be one flesh? Yes, again, context is reference onto the physical. Absolutely. But it is not, that is not all that is relegated to. Okay? And watch out for these. And this is heretical. When you got somebody who comes around saying, well, that's the only way it can be used for us today to instruct us, why would they do that? To justify some kind of sin. Because, okay, guess what? Guess what? Guess what? All right. When you're justifying uh, yoking yourself up with the Vatican for a day in December, guess what, dear pal? You're one flesh with Rome. That's why I can't take any of you, uh, you know, certain people who are so gung-ho about that seriously when you come out against the Vatican. It's like, dude, shut up. Okay, you, you cause so much problems justifying your worship of the mass, okay? How can I, how can you, how do you expect me to take you seriously? You come out against the Vatican when you defend the Vatican. And you become one flesh with them, with her, for one day out of the year.
a little rabbit there, but let's continue. Back on course. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Lowercase s. Lowercase s, because you're not a little God. And see, again, when you decide to take your own life, you are, you are saying that you are your own God. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body. But he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. And you know, what other kind of form of fornication other than the physical in the bed could there be? Oh, maybe taking it upon yourself to do something that, um, as a saint, it's not your call to make. Think about it. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which ye have of God? Look, don't you look at me. You look at that verse right there. And ye are not your own. Hey, brother, sister, you do not belong to you. Yes, all things are lawful for you. Yes, you got to make the right decisions, but guess what? Guess what? You are bought with a price. You don't have that luxury. Even though all things are lawful for you. You don't, you are not yours. You don't belong to you. But see, again, you do have to make the right decisions. But you bought and paid for Bought and paid for. Okay? For ye are bought with a price. The death, burial, and resurrection. The blood shed on the cross. Therefore glorify God in your body. And in your lowercase says spirit. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Which are God's. So, with that alone, you're considering drinking some Drano, huh? 1 Corinthians chapter, thir uh, chapter 3, 11 on to verse 17. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if any man build uh, upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, which abide fire, wood, hay, stubble, go up like a puff, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, the day star, our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? Or you can tie in, the day is like, come up here, the day when we stand before him at the judgment seat. Okay? Because it shall be revealed by fire. And this has nothing to do with purgatory. Okay? And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. What the Lord calls you to do. I have talked with so many brethren. Well, it's like, well, I'm not doing... Shh. I love you. Shut up! I love you. Shut up. Please. You do, you do not know how the Lord is using you. Okay? You don't. You're looking at my ugly mug right now. But I don't know how the Lord is going to use this. Okay? I don't. I have a good, good uh, thought that he will. But I don't know. You don't know when you're at the gas station buying your coffee and uh, a word you say of whatever. You don't know how the Lord is using his testimony in you. And it is arrogant. It is prideful. It is selfish. For you to be, well, I, I'm just, I'm, I'm this, I'm that. Uh. 
We all have moments of weakness. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. But when you stay there on, that's the danger. If any man's work shall be burned, the work that we do for the Lord, is it of our own doing wood, hay, and stubble? Or is it of gold, silver, or precious stones symbolizing what the, the works of the Lord? Whatever they may be. Brother, you don't know. You don't know how the Lord is using you. Sister, you don't know. You don't know how the Lord's going to use that in something in the future. So, in the future, when uh, the Lord orchestrates something, you could be like, hey, there was a time in my life, but the Lord, ah, okay? See, and one of the things that Satan can do and will do is get your focus on this. Yes, eternally minded. And that's the thing whenever, and brother, brother, you, you pay attention to this. You pay attention to this. Whenever you have an opportunity, and he will. He will. You watch. But whenever the Lord orchestrates something where you are with a, in a situation with someone saying to you, it's like, hey, you know, I want, I want to hang myself from the rafters in that moment. The eternal mindset. You saved? You think you're saved? Let's find out before you do this. Because guess what? You're not saved. Guess what? <laughs> you know, you go to Mark. It's like, this is... You think this is bad? <laughs> you think this is bad? Huh? You think this is bad? Oh, wow. Dude. Well, I, hey, I'm doing the Lord's work by preventing myself from doing anything more. So trusting in your own device to cease from doing something instead of putting your focus... Ah, no, 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 no. Again, suicide is the ultimate act of selfishness. And I can say that to you because I've known people who have killed themselves. I have. And had I known way back when what the Lord has given me the grace to know now, if any man work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire, pointing to eternal security. Your, rewar your rewards, you know, not salvation, your rewards, you know, your works that you did were of your own wood, hay, and stubble. The works, ah, or drinking the drink, whatever. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the capital S Spirit of God dwelleth in you. If you're a saint and you're considering I love you. I love you. I love you. If you're a saint and you're considering the stupidity of offing yourself this is what you do. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God and that the capital S, Spirit of God, dwelleth in you? You have the Father in you. Now, we can't hurt the Father physically within us. Of course not. That's No, but, you know. It was like the, uh, the one thing that, uh, I forget where I heard it from, about the one guy who was a, a saint struggling with uh, the sin of pornography. He was going to a, he was gonna go to a porn shop and do that gross stuff. And... The Lord's like, don't take me in there with you. Don't subject me to see those things. Why? Because the Lord was in him. See, your time to die 
isn't in your hands. And the minute you take it upon yourself to do such, you're, you're, you're usurping the Lord. As if that could happen. See, in a moment, in a moment, Satan's, but you know, you know, he flashes the world at you in a moment of time on that stupid stuff, okay? He also does that when you are down in the dung. That's especially when you need to put on the brakes and be like, okay, I need to really seriously think about this, okay? Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the capital S, Spirit of God, dwelleth in you? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. Now, obviously, that's not a reference unto the loss of salvation. Because if that were, then you would have this whole, this whole passage would be contradictory. And that is not the case. That is not the case. I know a man... It took a 12 gauge and missed. Put it right here. I'm going to put the thumb. He's going he's gonna to blow the top of his head off. And whatever happened, missed. He survived. But then again, okay, then again, standing for the Lord Jesus Christ and have the audacity. My problems were bigger than you. Romans 14. By the way, you and I, we were, we were, I, I, I didn't use all of those, but you and I were on the, you know who you are. We were on the same page with this. Praise the Lord. That's, that's why I reached out to you. We're on the same page. Romans 14. Verses 7 on verse 12. And see, here again, for the saint. For the saint. Okay? You're not a saint worse you think you are. And you're going, well, I'm going to just end it all and go home to be with the Lord. And you're not saved? Oh, wow. Hmm. Romans 14, verses 7 on verse 12. For none of us liveth to himself, and no man dieth to himself. We're all going to die alone, right? Because, you know, right? Well, we're going to look uh, here a little later about Saul and his armor bearer because we're going to look at some of the examples in scriptures of those who have killed themselves. You're going to find some very interesting things about that when we look at that, okay? But precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Precious when you usurp him and take it into your own hands, you are your own God, and decide to off yourself, and then stand before the Lord, and say, my problems were bigger than you. Wow. Wow, dude. Wow. See, see, see here's the thing. You gotta stop and think about this thing. The last thing you can do when someone comes to you, is to, it's okay. It's okay. I mean, be be there for them. If they cry, like hug them, let them snot all over you, whatever. But when it comes to this, you can't be, you can't be a sissy. You know, you talk about being gentle. Gentle in context is talking about you taking the whole of scripture and cramming it down someone's throat. Okay, when someone comes to you in that state, you, as a saint, say, okay, you have to consider the ramifications of your action. If you're not really saved, you're going to hell. If you are saved, you go to heaven to be with the Lord. Number one, you're going to have to face him and tell him that your problems were bigger than him. And he's going to be ashamed of you for all eternity. And see, the justification of a mindset. Well, that's why, yes, it is better than hell. Do you really love the Lord? Look, 
for those of you who are going through stuff, I know that's hard to hear. I know it's not what you want to hear. But you're going to hear what you need to hear. What, what kind of love are you showing the Lord when you usurp Him? And you go contrary, for none of us liveth to himself, and no man dieth to himself. You understand what I'm saying? For whether we live, we saved people, saints, we live unto the Lord. And whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live therefore or die, we are our own. We are the Lord's. All things are lawful for you. God is not a God of coercion. You have to make the right choices. God doesn't forcibly choose for you. He doesn't make you make the choice. He doesn't. And I will, I will argue tooth and nail with any of you wicked Dudley Do-Right Calvinists on that end. Oh yeah, boy. Okay? God does not, God is not a God of coercion. Okay? Now, a martyr's death is something totally different. But when you're deciding to kill yourself because of your problems. What and hey, like I said, I don't want to I don't want to diminish whatever you're going through cuz I'm not wearing your shoes. But you're a saint and you're trying to well, it's better than this. Now you're right. It's better to be with the Lord. But see, you have to weigh the consequence. The Lord shamed of you for eternity. And again, again, dude, gotta say you're gonna you're gonna give an account, okay? I, bad enough, I got the things I gotta account for myself when I stand before the Lord at the judgment seat, okay? And like I said, I I'd, I'd hate to be the one behind me, okay? <laughs> All right, but well, Lord, everything was a lot bigger than you. I keep saying that because you need to hear that. Because when you are down like that, that's one of the last things you are thinking of. And that's what you need to think of! Dude, when you're considering killing yourself, what's the center of your world? You! For whether we live, we live unto the Lord. And whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live therefore or die, we are the Lord's. They're not your own. For to this end, Christ both died and rose and revived, that he might be Lord both of the dead and the living. Why dost thou judge thy brother? Why dost thou set it not thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Only saved people stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And the judgment there that, that's being talked about is about, you know, day of worship and what you're eating. Okay, that's what that is in context of with uh, the premise of those Judaizers trying to bring that in to this dispensation. Okay, let's continue. And for, at, for it is written, as I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, saved and lost. A saved people at the judgment seat, lost people, uh, and stuff like that who don't go up at the redemption of the purchased possession. It's the great white throne of judgment, okay? And every tongue shall confess to God. So then every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. Those are generalized statements right there. Verses 11 and 12 are generalized statements within the context of reminding us that us saints are going to be at the judgment seat of Christ. I don't... I, I get it with the how things can be in life. I understand that. Like I said, I'm, I'm saying that to you plain. Sometimes life sucks. Okay, yes it does. But what is the source of your joy? See, when this gets 
overbearing. That's when you gotta narrow that uh, <laughs> sight of yours. Because remember Peter? He took his eyes off Jesus because he saw the wind boisterous and he began to sink. He didn't plummet. He began to sink. What did he do? Lord, save me! Why did he die? Second Corinthians chapter 4 verses I can't read my writing 6 on to the close. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness hath shined in our hearts to give the light and the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels. Treasure. Precious. Pearl without price. Beyond price. Treasure in earthen vessels. Is the Lord Jesus Christ, God your Father, a treasure to you? Who dwells within this temple? Eh? Yeah? And you're going to go throw yourself in front of a Mack truck? But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God, not of us. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. All people, Paul wanted, had people who wanted him dead. There are people who want me dead. <laughs> okay. You know, you're suffering because of bad choices, whatever. Okay, whatever. Tomorrow the sun will rise. Okay. <laughs> You need to stop and think about the consequences of your irrational, spur-of-the-moment uh, choices that you are contemplating. And you need to remember the eternal perspective, which is conveniently being lost with so much of Christianity and things of the world. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken, even though some of you think you are. Cast down, but not destroyed. Because most of the Jesuits can do is kill your body. They ain't going to kill your soul or your spirit. Okay? Always bearing about in the body... The dying of the Lord Jesus. That the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. You're showing contempt for the Lord when you say, when you are about to, <coughs> okay, you're showing contempt for the Lord by telling Him that the world, your problems, whatever, are more than he can handle. Well, why isn't he? I don't know. For, okay, why? Okay, look, stop. 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 Take a step back. Time out. Look. Use your eyes. You know those things in your head. And look. It's like, okay, during all of this, where's my focus? You know, in Amos chapter 4, I did this to you, I did this to you, I did this to you, I did this, yet you turned not to me. And when you're going through something where you're considering offering, offering yourself, is your focus on the Lord? Come on, that, that's, a, that's a rhetorical question. Okay? 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 Let's continue. Let's continue. Okay? Let's continue. 
For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. When you give up, when you take that selfish thing, you are, and think of the testimony. Think of your selfishness. Well, it's better than here. You're right. But you don't know how the Lord is using you. And the Lord is using you. You don't know how. You're not, okay, you're not doing this. You're not passing out this. You're not doing that. You're not doing that. But in one way or another, I just talked to a brother from out northeast. The, the, the brother's like going to people and just helping them out. Just, just helping them out. Okay? Getting crowns. Okay? All right? Brother going to see his mother. All right? The, the test, his testimony there amongst the many people. Brother going to a gas station, getting his coffee. Okay? You don't know how the Lord is using his testimony in you. And when you as a saint take it upon yourself, think about that. What does our Lord mean to you? Okay? Because look, I'm going to tell you plain. I'm going to tell you plain. I love you. You as a saint decide to kill yourself. You're really showing that you don't have that much faith in the Lord. Think about it. What if he wants to? What if he, he's, he's allowing that obviously? Why? To show you something? Well, where was your attention during all this? The devil getting, you know, distracting you, right? Right? Or were you on your face? Well, it, 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 has, it hasn't, you know, he hasn't... Um, whose timing is more perfect, ours or his? So then death worketh in us, but life in you. You know, eventually it's going to end. Sooner or later, okay? Sooner or later. And then when the Lord pulls you out of that situation, somewhere in your life, okay, he can orchestrate for someone to have, be going through something very similar where you can be, give me a better word, kind of a mentor in a way. It's like, hey, you know, a couple years ago, man, I was, was going to chop on a 38 special. Okay, I was, I'm going to jump out of whatever. I, I had the Drano and a wine glass. Okay? I sought the Lord. I sought the Lord. And <coughs> you don't want to go to hell. You don't want to. We, everyone deserves to go to hell. Okay? I'm doing better than I deserve. I deserve death, hell, and the grave. Okay? You don't want to go to hell. You don't want to go to hell. Hell is worse than any, any problem, anything that you on this earth in these days, hell is worse. How was, how was prepared for the devil and his angels? Okay? But you, because you want to be a, a servant of your father, you lost people, you're going to go there. Hell, you no. No, you do not, you would not rather want to go to hell. That That's foolish. That's foolish. And some of you know better. Said from a weakness. Understandable. But come on now. Come on. You, you need to hear it like this. You need to hear it like this. Because black and white. Hell or heaven or hell. That, that's what is the eternity is at stake here. When you're contemplating taking the life that was given you into your hands and you playing God. And that's the thing. You're playing God. How do you think he's going to feel about that when you stand before him? 
<laughs> you atheists. <laughs> you guys got a big problems coming. Anyway, let's continue. Verse 13. We having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believe. Therefore have I, sp I, therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. Knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also by Jesus and shall present us with you. All things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many rebound to the glory of God. And when the Lord brings you out of your when you know, tumultuous sea, thanksgiving to God. For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man, the hidden man of the heart, the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, is renewed day by day. Jesus doesn't be, need to be renewed. No, he doesn't. But he renews us because he's the hidden man of the heart. What does that say? The inward man. Okay? The inward man is renewed day by day. Meaning, the Lord is the one who's going to renew you day by day. His mercies are new every morning. You know, the cliche that Christianity has made that. For our light affliction. Eternity with the Lord in heaven. Yes. Him being ashamed of you because you took your life because of constant barrage. Light affliction. You made the problem eternal rather than looking to the eternal, our Father. Do you got that? For our light affliction, which is but for a moment. Oh, sure, it doesn't feel like one, does it? No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. But see, eternal mindset. Eternally minded. A lot of you youngins out there, you struggle with that, especially with you in, within your 20s and stuff like that. Okay? Uh, yeah, when you get a little age on you and your body starts to fight against you because of what you did to it as a lost man, okay? the eternal perspective becomes a little bit more pronounced. I wish, I pray the Lord that you youngins would at least consider and begin to search the scriptures and grasp, begin to take hold of that eternal perspective. Because that eternal perspective is lost within Christianity. For our light affliction, look at this verse. Light affliction, which is but for a moment in the scheme of eternity, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal, there's a the word, eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, your world begin to collapse. But the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal. But the things which are not seen are eternal. Ephesians 3. Ephesians 3, 11 on to verse 21. According to the eternal purpose which he proposed in Christ Jesus our Lord, Eternal purpose. Eternal purpose. God does have a plan for your life. Yes, he does. Christianity throws that at you to tantalize your covetousness, to make it all about you. But yes, God does have a plan for your life. You are his ambassador. Now, what an ambassador you are by telling the whole world that he wasn't big enough to handle to help you through your problems and you kill yourself. Think of what you're going to be, if you do that, yes, you'll be in heaven if you're a saint, yes, you will be, yes, you will be. 
But think about the testimony you are leaving behind as a saint by telling people that, well, my God, who I told you I love, wasn't strong enough, powerful enough to help me out during these times, so I ended it because I was selfish. Wow. You need to hear it like that. You need to hear it like that. Because the devil will kiss you on the cheek as he pushes you off the cliff. In whom we have boldness and access with confidence by faith of him. Wherefore I desire that ye faint not at my tribulations for you, which is your glory. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that ye that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his capitalist spirit in the inner man. There's that thing about the inner man again. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height, and to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, that ye might be filled with all fullness of God. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. Uh, the power that worketh in us is the Lord. Okay? that people will take that verse and it's like, well, you can, if you believe it, you can achieve it. Okay, people will take that verse and try to twist it into that you are your own God. No, uh, the power that worketh in us, the power is what? The one that worked the spirit in the inner man, the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, okay? Unto him, the one, that, the power that worketh in us, unto him be glory in the church, the body, by Christ Jesus throughout ages, world without end. Amen. Amen. Romans 8. Romans 8. Verses 38 and 39. Romans 8. Verses 38 and 39. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Eternal security. Once you come to the Lord His way, His way, the way He elected, He elected the cross. You want what He has? You want the Lord? you got to go His way. All right? All right, it's it's that simple. Second Timothy chapter four, Second Timothy chapter four, verses seventeen and eighteen. Notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me and strengthened me, that by me the preaching might fully might be fully known, and that all the Gentiles might hear. And I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion, and no marvel. <laughs> Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light, and he walketh up all around. Like as a lion, seeking whom he may devour. And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work, and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Second Timothy. We're going to be in Second Timothy uh, here now. Second Timothy, chapter two. Pick this up. Nineteen on to verse twenty-six. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. Once saved, always saved, eternally secure. If you're a saint and you kill yourself, you're not going to lose what isn't yours to lose. Okay? You, you know, if that were the case, then you'd have, we, saints, Houston, we'd have a problem. Because that would mean that we can dictate our own salvation. And 
if we lost salvation because of <clears throat> something like that, then we're not once saved, always saved, are we? But see, before you start thinking, well, then, then what, what do you think? It's like, well, then why not everybody? God has a plan for us. We don't live unto ourselves. We are here to be his ambassador. Well, there's someone better than me. Shut up. You're being selfish and self-centered. You're thinking about yourself only. You're not thinking about the Lord. Okay, the Lord can and will use you in whatever capacity He wants to, and you don't know how He's using you. And it is, think about it again. What an offense to the Lord when you pretend he, you're Him and take the life that He gave you into your hands. Oh boy. Yes. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having the seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his. And let every one that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Now, a while ago, I, I was off on this, but a dear brother corrected me on this. Praise the Lord. But in a great house, we are of the house of the Lord meaning we belong on to him. Okay? But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth. Wood, burnt up. Earth becomes clay and shatters, or becomes a pottery and shatters, or whatever. And some to honor and some to dishonor. Well, a saint, you know, who's being an idiot, who's refusing to live according to the scripture and the Lord ends up, you know, to deliver such a one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus, okay? But also, some to dishonor. A great house. We are of the house of the Lord. Some to honor and some to dishonor. When you take it upon yourself to end your life, however sick, sick way you want to justify it, contrary to his design, his desire. Because remember, he's not a God of coercion. Come here. Do you really think you're going to get the honor of the Lord for doing that? Come on. Come on, let's be, let's be adults. Let's be real here. I had a plan. I, you know, I didn't want you to come here yet. I had other plans for you. Well, why didn't you stop me? Um, you got to make the right choice. I'm not going to... Do make the choice for you. You have to make that choice. You have to choose whether to walk according to the way I will have you to walk or not. Because the minute he starts doing that, according to these idiot Calvinists, you, you're a robot. And God doesn't want robots. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified in me for the master's use. And prepare it unto every good work. Hmm. What about the one about dishonor? Again, this is showing us what? In a great house, the house of the Lord, you know, some are, are kept alive to be a bad, uh, it's like, don't be like brother so and so. But also, again, in heaven, great house, you know, we got mansions, okay, the tie in there. You take it upon yourself and you play God. You're a vessel of dishonor. Because how are you honoring the Lord when you take it upon yourself? Because that, your problems are bigger than He is. I know I keep saying that to you, but you need to understand that. And if you watch this, hopefully this will get through that thick head of yours. Love you. I really do. 
Flee also youthful lusts. Youthful. It's all about you. It's all about you. Hold your place here. Hold your place. Please ask these 11, anyone? Please and thank you, Father. Rejoice, O young man, in thy youth. I, 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 me, 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 me. There's a generation. Uh, what, what, what is that? What is that, brother? Um, uh, what is that? Is that, uh, where is that? Yeah. Uh, Proverbs 30. Uh, there is a, uh, let's see, um, 11 on to verse 14. There is a generation that curseth their father and doth not bless their mother. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. There's a generation that are pure in their own eyes. I'm just to do that because I'm ending it all. I'm going to be with the Lord. Y yes. Saint, sure you'll be in heaven. But he'll be your vessel of dishonor. Pure in your own eyes. I was justified. Says who? Show me. There's a generation that appear in their own eyes and yet not watch from their filthiness. Oh, that right there plays on to the lost people who put themselves in hell when they decide to be God and act. Shame. Doesn't have to be that way. There's a generation, oh, how lofty are their eyes and their eyelids are lifted up. There's a generation whose teeth are as swords and their jaw teeth as knives to devour the poor from off the earth and the needy from among men. Blessed are the poor. Blessed are the poor. Blessed, blessed are the dependent on Christ. Please ask these 11. Rejoice, O young man, in thy youth and let thy heart cheer thee in the days of thy youth and walk in the ways of thine heart. And in the sight of thine eyes. But know thou. But know thou. That for all these things. God will bring thee into judgment. Therefore remove sorrow from thy heart. And put away evil from thy flesh. For childhood and youth. Are vanity. Flee also youthful lusts. It's all about me. Me, 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 me. But follow righteousness. Faith, charity, peace. With them. That call on the, on the Lord out of a pure heart. Congregate with your own. What uh, fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? But foolish! Behaving as if you say in your heart there is no God. What do you think suicide is? And unlearned questions avoid. Knowing that they do gender strifes. You know, some of you will, what about assisted suicide? Again, okay, what about, you know, these guys who are in terminal pain of cancer, okay? What about that? Again, they're black and white. Okay, end my suffering, my, me, me, me. Uh, Elisha, when he was in sickness... He put his hands on the guy's bow and he shot the arrows and stuff like that. Okay? I, uh, Dean. Uh, the one individual who, um, who had MS went home to be with the Lord uh, in his final days before going home to be with the Lord. He gave flowing, glowing testimony even though he was in pain. Okay? There's no way around it. Suicide is the ultimate act of selfishness. And if you are a saint, no matter your predicament, your life isn't yours. Even though you are the one, you, you know, you got to make the right choices. We've already proved that through Scripture. 
And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient. Gentle is not being, don't scare them. Don't, a Christian would hear something like this, and they'd be like, oh my gosh! You know, what does he say? I'm telling you what you need to hear. Christianity will tell you, God loves you. Christianity tells you what you want to hear. Saints tell you what you need to hear. There's a difference. Why do you think Christians are so popular? And the gentle there is reference on to taking this and cramming it down their throat. No. 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 Some have compassion, making a difference. Others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire. You're lost, you kill yourself. Guess what? Your problems ain't ending, buddy. They're just starting. And you'll never escape. Come. Let us reason together, you and I. Doesn't mean if the Lord saves you that your problems are going to go away like that. I actually, some of them are probably going to increase. But see, God does have a purpose behind things. Yes, God does have a plan for your life. But you know what? Usually involves suffering for righteousness sake. Righteousness sake. Not so that you can get a whatever 150 inch plasma screen TV that's as long as this wall. Talk about crazy, man. Let's continue. All right. Uh, where were we? Uh, yeah, okay. Verse 25. In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. Oppose themselves. You are your worst enemy. If God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. Captive by his will. Huh? Yeah, you, you get on this thing and you go like that, you go like that, and then you see the videos. It's like, oh, in comparison to what I'm seeing, look at how happy they look. Look at how cute and perfect complexion. Oh, and then I look at my life. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I look at all these guys here. Uh, look at that. Look at that. I just need to end it because I can't live up to this. And look at verses 11 on to verse 13 in 2 Timothy chapter 2. This is a faithful saying. For if we be dead with him, dead to ourselves and to the world, we shall also live with him. If we suffer... See, the God of Christianity is a God of covetousness. A God who is coercive. A God who has no standards. A God who's okay with going contrary to what he said in order to pacify man. That's... That. <coughs> If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. That's not in context to salvation. That's in context to other things like health, um, uh, you know, provision, companionship, friendship, fellowship, okay, whatever. It's not in salvation. It's not context to salvation. If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful. He cannot deny himself. Why is that? Well, you look at Ephesians chapter 5, 1 verse, verse 30. Ephesians chapter 5, not Philippians bread. Uh, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 30. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. We are of the house of God. We belong to him. We are bought and paid for. We've already looked at that. Okay? Uh, Ephesians chapter 1, verse uh, 6. To the praise of the glory of His grace, 
wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. Okay? Okay? And also, while in Ephesians 1, verses 13 on to verse 14, in whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed. Nevertheless, the foundation of God's... Uh, this is 2 Timothy, verse 19. 2, uh, 2 Timothy 2, verse 19. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. Seal. Once saved, always saved. Okay? Back in Ephesians 1, verse 13. In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that capital S, Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession, unto the praise of his glory. Once saved, always saved. Okay? Okay? No, if you're a saint and you did selfishly, selfishly, Denying the Lord, mocking Him, because what are you doing? You can't help me. My world and problems are bigger than you, so I'm going to take it upon myself. Wow. Wow. Okay? Yes, you go to heaven. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 20. But in a great house, we are of, we are of the Lord's body. Got mansions waiting for us, right? I, you know, we got a closet. That's great. Okay? Yes. But, but in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, which I have abide the fire. Okay? We already looked at that. Okay? But also wood and earth. We, we already looked in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Okay? And some to honor and some to dishonor. A dishonored vessel in heaven. You're willing to pay that just because of something that's a light affliction that's eventually going to end? You're not taking this through. And of course not. When you're in a moment like that, all you want, stop, stop. I get that. But see, it's in a moment like that. <laughs> Dude, you could get that. Lord, help me, help me, help me. Okay? Well, I can't get away. What are you, in chains? It's raining. Run! Get out of there! Get away! Do what you got to do! Once that bullet leaves that barrel, it's not coming back! Okay? Once you make that stupid decision, there's no coming back from it. No matter what that jerk Andy says. Hey, tell him I said so. Okay? First John chapter 1. First John chapter 1. You offering yourself as a saint you're not going to lose what is, it's not yours to lose. But you're a vessel, when you take that action, a vessel of dishonor. God is going to be ashamed of you. Yes, you'll be in heaven, but far better than hell. Amen. Amen. Eternity. A dishonored vessel. God's not a respecter of persons within salvation. Uh, there are brethren uh, at the judgment seat of Christ who are going to have more crowns than me. Okay, a lot more. Okay, yes. That, 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 we've already proved that. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, 
which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. For the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness, and shew unto you that eternal life, which was with the Father, and was manifested unto us. That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you, that ye also may have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father, and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And these things, we, and these things write we unto you, that your joy may be full. This then is the message which we have heard of him, and declare unto you that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ his Son cleanseth us from all sin except the sin of suicide. Oh, excuse me, except the sin of uh, sodomy. I'm going to address that sodomite Steve Anderson guy sometime this week. Boy, really. yeah. The blood of Jesus Christ's Son cleanseth us from all sin. What, I, I, and I don't like to do this, but I'm going to. Rachman had a good phrase. Um, what's going to put you in hell is not what you have done, but rather that you didn't take the cure to your disease. That was from Ruckman. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. I'm not a sinner. <laughs> Good luck. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. There is not a sin today that the Lord cannot and will not forgive. Don't worry about the unpardonable sin. Suicide is not the unpardonable sin. Okay? The unpardonable sin only is applicable when Christ is physically present on the earth. We are his body. We are not Christ himself. We are of his house. We are not Christ himself. Even though the Calvinists want you to believe that. Okay? The only time the unpardonable sin comes into play when Christ is right there physically present or on the throne at Jerusalem. Okay? So get, get that thing out of your head with the unpardonable sin. Today in this dispensation, you don't have to worry about that. Okay? All right? If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar. And his word is not in us. Verse 8. I'm not a sinner. A lost person is like, I, I, I'm not a sinner. I don't think, I feel I need God. I don't feel I need God. Verse 10. You got, I don't sin anymore. You got to stop sinning. Back to 2 Timothy chapter 2. Back to 2 Timothy chapter 2. Verses 1 on verse 5. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 1 out of verse 5. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. And if a man also strive for masteries, yet is he not crowned, except he strive lawfully. What does that mean? You take it into your own hands to be God and end your life? You'll be, we've proven, you'll be in heaven. We have also proven that, yeah, you'll be in heaven, but you'll be one of those vessels unto dishonor for eternity. I don't know how anybody who claims to be claims to be a Christian could be okay with that and claim that they love the Lord. See that that doesn't make and see that's what the the easy believers people bank on. Okay? Hey, I'll, at least I'll be with the Lord. 
Well, you easy, easy believers people are not because you don't have the right Jesus and the right gospel. You don't. You offer another Jesus and another gospel. But uh, yes, you will be if you're a saint. If you're a saint, you're actually saint. Yes, you will be. You're going. You're going to heaven. Period. But woe be to you that everybody's having the party and you got to be over there. Yeah, you'll be in heaven. Of course. To a lot better than hell. Amen, amen. I want to have fellowship with my father. Don't you? Don't you? Philippians chapter 1, verses 21 on to verse 24. Philippians chapter 1, verses 21 on to verse 24. For to me to live is Christ and to die is gain, right? Of course. We'd much rather be with the Lord, of course. But if I live in the flesh, this is the fruit of my labor. Yet what I shall choose I wot not. For I am in a strait betwixt two, having a desire to depart and be with Christ, which is far better. Nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. That was Paul. I love you. Shut up. Shut up. You, you don't know how the Lord is using you. You don't. Suicide is the ultimate act of selfishness. Paul! Yes, the greatest of the saints. Yes, he was. But see that? Can't, I can't see that. Nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. I'm not, I, I'm not doing anything. Well, how do you know? How do you, you don't know. You don't know. Back to 2 Timothy, verse, uh, chapter 4. And here it is. Verses 4 and 8. Uh, 7 under verse 8, excuse me. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. What does that mean? Paul's time had come to an end. He finished his course. It was time for him to go to the Father. He fulfilled what the Lord had in store for him to do. God does have a plan for your life. Yes, he does. And it is to fulfill his desires as he would like you to do so. And it is, it is, I would go as far as to say blasphemy. For when you make the world bigger and our God smaller, and you decide to play God and take yourself out before you can finish the course that he has set out for you. Do you understand? Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, which the Lord, the righteous Judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love His appearing. <laughs> Dude, come on. Really seriously think about how little of our Lord you are thinking of when you are contemplating going out before your time is up. And yes, I do wholeheartedly believe that there is a set time. You can read uh, Ecclesiastes 3, which was yesterday. Okay, you can read for, for everything there, for every time there is a purpose. But instead of butchering that. Okay? Yes. Yes. I, I do believe that wholeheartedly. 
Okay, that we have God knows when we're going to die. Okay, He does. Okay, well, why doesn't God stop people from committing suicide? You might ask. Uh, you you made your choice. He can, but see, He is not a God of coercion. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. God has a plan for your life. Okay? But as we already read in 2 Timothy, you know, if we suffer with him, we will also reign with him. Christianity takes God as a plan for your life and points it at you as a par to your covetousness, which is not the case in reality. Yes, I personally I believe scripture verifies this. We're here for a set time. And the time we have, how are we using it? Okay? And when you decide to get into the way of that, you might be saying, well, man can't do that, Brad. Uh, well, remember when the children of Israel were to go over and inherit the promised land the first time? Okay, Mr. Calvinist with your coercive false god. Uh, did the Lord force them to go over? No. No, what did they do? They saw the people in Canaan bigger. You read about that in Numbers 13. Thank you very much. Uh, you read about that in Numbers 13 about how the spies that came back made the things over there in the promised land look bigger and them and their God that small in comparison to the problems. In the book of Judges, in the book of Judges, chapter 9, Let's look at these people, some people who uh, decided to be God and take themselves out. Judges chapter 9, not Joshua, come on. Judges chapter 9, verses 50 on verse 55. Then went Abimelech to Thebes and encamped against Thebes and took it. There was a strong tower within the city, and thither fled all the men and women, and all they of the city, and shut it to them, and got them up to the top of the tower. And Abimelech came unto the tower. He was the bramble, by the way, remember. And fought against it, and went hard unto the door of the tower to burn it with fire. And a certain woman cast a piece of a millstone upon Abimelech's head, and all to break his skull. Then he called hastily unto the young man, his armor bearer, and said unto him, Draw thy sword and slay me, that, when, that men say not of me a young woman, a, uh, a woman slew him. And his young man thrust him through, and he died. And when the men of Israel saw that Abimelech was dead, they departed every man unto his place. Interestingly enough, though, See, Abimelech said that people don't say of me, a woman uh, killed me, but yet scripture wants you to remember a woman killed him. So, think about this. Abimelech, who was the bramble, by the way, had someone else kill him, suicide by, suicide by cop, we could say maybe. Um, did that, why? So men wouldn't be saying of him about, um, you know, woman killed me. But guess what? God wants us to remember that a woman killed Abimelech. And I forget where else it is mentioned in this, in the scriptures, where it makes a specific mention about how Abimelech was killed by a woman because he got a piece of pottery dumped on his head. Mm -hmm. See, see, he committed suicide by someone else in order so people wouldn't say that a woman killed him, but yet God wants us to remember that a woman killed him. Hmm. Okay? Mr. Dunderhead, Samson, in Judges chapter 16. So with Abimelech, his 
death by armor bearer or whatever hmm. was number one what self-serving number two god god's like uh, you're gonna be ever forever remembered bramble as the guy who got pottery dumped on his head and killed by a woman so his death by whoever suicide was vanity of vanities yeah mr dunderhead samson i like samson i don't think samson was the sharpest knife in the drawer the brightest bulb in the box would i have said that to his face absolutely not he'd rip me to shreds <laughs> but uh i believe samson's in heaven okay but like i said i don't think samson was that bright i really don't like uh esau Esau. A lot of people point to Esau that he did that thing about marrying um, outside of his kindred to be a jerk. Esau wasn't bright. Esau was kind of stupid, I think. I really do. Same with Samson. I, I, I do. Uh, but bless his heart. Uh, I don't think Samson was that bright. Anyway, uh, Judges 16, verses 28 to verse 30. He went after Delilah, got his hair cut, the locks, which were like a source of his power or whatever, okay? And he was presumptuous. I'll go and shake the Philistines and whatnot. whole lot of stuff we can go into this. They, you know, push his fingers into his eyes, put his eyes out by, uh, you know, you know, put his eyes out, okay? And then he was forced to make sport entertainment, you could say sport for the Philistines but the hair of his head started to grow again and Samson called unto the Lord and said O Lord God remember me I pray thee and strengthen me I pray thee only this once O God that I may be at once avenged on the Philistines for my two eyes Now, in this context, reading about Samson, you have to remember Samson toyed around with his calling as a Nazarite. He, he, was, a, he was the equivalent of a man whore, okay? Um, he went where he should not have went. He did things he should not have done. He did great acts for the Lord. Yes, he did. You know, Samson's in heaven. Yes, he is. I, I have no doubt. But verse 28 also points to i pray thee i pray thee i may my two eyes not getting away from that one selfish and samson took hold of the two middle pillars upon which the house stood and on which it was borne up of thee, one with his right hand and the other with his left. And Samson said, Let me die with the Philistines. And he bowed himself with all his might, and the house fell upon all, upon the lords and upon all the people that were therein. So the death which so the dead which he slew at his death were more than they which he slew in his life. Samson died a martyr's death he did but what we can't get away from with Samson is number one Samson messed around with his calling he lightly esteemed it he took advantage of it to gain and he also was a man whore and went with a woman he should never have had and he paid the price God was gracious to him but we can't get away from verse 28 that I, I pray thee, strengthen me, I pray thee only this once, O God, that I may be at once avenged of the Philistines for my two eyes. Saul, <laughs> First Samuel chapter 31, First Samuel chapter 31, okay? At least you can say with Samson, at least, okay, it was in a form thereof of martyrdom, okay? 
okay? Unescapable with the premise of I, I, me. Okay? I just can't get away from that. That's, that's scripture. Okay? 1 Samuel 31, verses 1 on to verse 6. And Saul, the people made me do it. Come with me and worship so I can look good in front of the people. Saul, who went to a witch, and Samuel came up. Saul, King Saul. Now the Philistines fought against Israel, and the men of Israel fled from before the Philistines and fell down slain in Mount Gilboa. And the Philistines followed hard upon Saul and upon his sons. And the Philistines slew Jonathan and Abinadab and Melchishua, Saul's sons. And the battle went sore against Saul, and the archers hit him. And he was sore wounded of the archers. Then said Saul unto his armor-bearer, Draw thy sword and thrust me through therewith, lest these uncircumcised come and thrust me through and abuse me. But his armor-bearer would not. For he was sore afraid. Therefore Saul took a sword and fell upon it. A request to die with dignity, huh? Hmm? Dignity. A dignified death. Saul, King Saul is in hell. Okay? So, was that a dignified death? And his armor bearer. Verse 6. Or verse 5. And when his armor bearer saw that Saul was dead, he fell likewise upon his sword and died with him. So Saul died and his three sons and his armor bearer and all his men the same day together. And you also got to remember that Saul, that was a sign of judgment against Saul for all the evil that he did. A request to die with dignity? Was Saul dignified in his death because that death came from disobedience unto the Lord? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. You keep that in mind when they get this macho, I, 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 me, me, me thing about self-assisted uh, uh, suicide. Uh, pull the plug on me. Yeah. Keep that in mind, okay? 2 Samuel 17. One verse, verse 23, Ahithophel, the revolt of Absalom, okay, which came about because David done got, done got uh, uh, Bathsheba with child in adultery, killed her husband, tried to cover it up, okay, um, Absalom went and betrayed him and stole, stole his house away from him. Ahithophel, who was a counselor for David, joined with Absalom. And Ahithophel was actually giving reasonable, sensible, good counsel onto Absalom. It's like, hey, look, this you, you want to be, you want this to be last, you need to do this. And his counsel was actually militarily, logically accurate. But of course, um, uh, what was that? Hushai. Hushai the archite, David's friend, came and gave un, uh, gave contrary. See, the counsel that Ahithophel was giving Absalom was sensible um, wisdom, was sensible knowledge, sensible counsel. Look, this is what you got to do in order to secure the kingdom to yourself. Hushai, at the behest of David and the Lord, came along and said, okay, hey, no, no, no. You... Go in your bravada yourself and go. Go, put yourself in harm's way. Okay? Ahith Ahithophel's um, counsel that he was giving Absalom was actual. You read read the whole chapter on your own. Okay? Read, read it. Okay? You'll see. Ahithophel's counsel was sound military um, counsel. I mean, it was. It's like, okay, you want to be established? You, this is what you got to do. Hushai, at the behest of David, of the Lord, came in and said, like, no, 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 Go into uh, Absalom's bravada. Hey, go in your person. You know your, your father is that man like a bear who's robbed of his whelps. 
Go out there yourself. And Hithophel's like, hey, let me let me take care of the I'll go, you know. Or some. Verse 23. And when Ahithophel saw that his counsel was not followed, he saddled his ass and rose and got him home to his house, to his city, and put his household in order and hanged himself and died and was buried in the sepulcher of his father. Why did he do that? Because if uh, he knew, number one, that Absalom was going to go get killed, he knew that because his counsel was right. And if he had lived, he was going to get killed anyway. So he killed himself instead of facing the music, as it were. Okay. So, thus far, at the examples of um, the four examples, we got Abimelech, Dunderhead, Samson, Saul and his armor bearer, and Ahithophel. It doesn't really look good for anyone scripturally who has committed suicide. Does it? First Kings sixteen, verses fifteen on verse twenty. Zimri had Zimri peace. Jezebel said to um, oh, I forgot what is um Jehu. When she was up there, she painted her face. Jehu comes up and a couple of eunuchs is like, and Jehu's like, who's on the Lord's side? Who? And there's the eunuchs is like, throw that lady down. She gets thrown down in a horse. <laughs> okay. Zimri. But she said, had Zimri peace when he conspired against his master? In the 20 and 7th year of Asa, king of Judah, did Zimri began? Uh, did Zimri reign seven days in Teresa? The people were encamped against Gibeathon, which belonged to the Philistines, and the people, and the people that were encamped, heard say, "Zimri hath conspired, and hath also slain the king." Wherefore all Israel made Omri, the captain of the host, king over Israel that day in the camp. And Omri went up from Gibeathon, and all Israel with him, and they besieged Treza. And it came to pass, when Zimri saw that the city was taken, that he went into the palace of the king's house, and burned the king's house over him with fire, and died. For his sins. For his sins which he sinned in doing evil in the sight of the Lord. Stop. Zimri killed himself. He committed suicide because of his sins. Okay. Do you think that? Uh, do, you, do you think Zimri's in heaven? I believe Samson is. Absolutely. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. But um, again, look at this context. What brought about? That suicide. What brought about the suicide of Abimelech? Self. What brought about the th suicide of Dunderhead Samson? Self. Saul and his armor bearer? Self. The armor bearer. Why didn't you save Saul? Ahithophel. He knew, uh, he knew Absalom was going to get his rear end kicked. He knew that. He knew what he was saying was the right way to go. And Hushai was, he knew that. And had he survived, he was going to die anyway. Okay? Self. Self. For his sins which, for his sins which he sinned in doing evil in the sight of the Lord and walking in the way of Jeroboam and in the, his sin which he did to make Israel sin. Now the rest of the acts of Zimri and his treason that he wrought, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Israel? And now the most notable one that everyone thinks about. Judas Iscariot. Matthew chapter 27. 
And this is interesting too because a brother made a really good comment and I, I disagree with you, brother. I, I disagree with you. Matthew 27, verses 1 on to verse 5. Judas. When the morning was come, all the chief priests and elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him, in, put him to death. And when they had bound him, they led him away and delivered him to Pontius Pilate, the governor. Then Judas, when he betrayed him, then Judas, which had betrayed him, when he saw that he was condemned, repented himself and brought again the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned, and that I have betrayed the innocent blood. And they said, What is that to us? See thou to that. And he cast down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed and went and hanged himself. He repented himself. He, he felt guilt. He was very sorrowful. Yes, he did. He was. He knew he messed up. Ma uh, Matthew 26, verses 21 on to verse 25. And as they did eat, he said, Verily I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. And they were exceeding sorrowful, and began every one of them to say unto him, Lord, is it I? He, and he answered and said, It is he that dippeth his hand with me in the dish, the same shall betray me. The Son of Man goeth as it is written of him. But woe unto that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It had been good for that man if he had not been born. Hmm. Then Judas, which betrayed him, answered him and said, Master, is it I? He said unto him, Thou hast said. Now, when you look at verse 24, that is talking about what we see in Matthew 27, saying, I have sinned. The guilt. The guilt. The realization, oh wow, what I just did. Okay? The guilt. That is a reference onto the guilt. That is not a reference at all saying that Judas was beyond salvation. Even though, I mean, Judas, of course not. Verse 24 is a reference on, it had been good for that man if he had not been born. Meaning, the the burden of guilt the thing and obviously what Judas thought thought was enough to go and hang himself okay in John chapter 13 verses 21 on to verse 27 brother you'll see this I love you I don't think Satan ever left Judas Iscariot. I don't think he did. In your comment, you said that's when uh, Satan left Judas Iscariot when he was guilty and hung himself. I did. There is no scriptural evidence to tell us that Satan ever departed out of Judas Iscariot. Just like there is no evidence during the time of Jacob's trouble that Satan will ever leave that man of sin, the son of perdition. Except, you know, after whatever, and he goes into, you know what I'm saying. I, I don't, there, I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that. I, I don't think Satan, I think Satan was there all the way until he hung himself. Because Judas at any moment could have, it's like, you know what, I'm not going to do this. I'm going to try to get right. No. John 13, 21 on to verse 27. When Jesus had thus said, he was troubled in spirit and testified and said, Verily I, verily I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. Then the disciples looked one on another, doubting of whom he spake. Now there was leaning on Jesus' bosom one of his disciples whom Jesus loved. Shimon Peter therefore beckoned to him that he should ask who it should be of whom he spake. Then, he then, lying on Jesus' breast, saith unto him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, It is he, it, he it is, 
to whom I shall give a son. S-O-P, son of perdition. When I have dipped it, and when he dipped the sop, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, the son of Shimon. And after the SOP sop, Satan entered into him. Then said Jesus unto him, That thou doest, do quickly. There is no evidence inside of Scripture that shows that Satan ever went out before, Ju uh, before Judas done killed himself. There's no evidence to support that. What is there is they point to, well, the guilt that Judas had. And if Satan was in him, he... Really? If Satan was in, still in Judas Iscariot, then why was he so guilty? Well, number one, in uh, uh, Matthew 26... Our Lord says it would be better for that man if he had never been born. We're talking about the weight of the guilt that he would have. But that does not mean or prove that Satan never left Judas Iscariot. Mark chapter 5. Look at this. Verses 5 on to verse 7. The guy at the tombs. The devil possessed guy with the legion. Check this out. This idea that, you know, because uh, he repented himself. He, he felt guilty. I betrayed innocent blood. He did. Yes, we, we just read it. But does that mean that Satan still wasn't in Judas Iscariot? Wait, what do we do with this? And always, night and day, he, the devil-possessed man, was in the mountains and in the tombs crying. Ah. and cutting himself with stones sign of mourning <laughs> my mother did that who was possessed with devils she did this <laughs> she did that quite often weeping and crying and gnashing of teeth just because Judas Iscariot their brother had you know he felt guilt you know, I betrayed innocent blood. Well, anyone could have figured that one out. That doesn't mean at all, that is not scriptural proof or evidence that, um, Jude, that Satan ever left Judas Iscariot. I personally believe when Satan was done with Judas Iscariot is when he dangled and either his neck snapped or he died. Okay? That man of sin, the son of perdition. When he gets that wound, I believe... That's when Satan's going to enter that man of sin, the son of perdition. And he ain't going to go at all until the time come. Okay? Let's, oh, let's keep reading. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him. Now put that in context with Judas Iscariot. He repented himself. Zechariah betrayed in innocent blood. We see a devil-possessed man crying and cutting himself with stones, a sign of mourning, uh, um, a heathen pagan thing, cutting themselves, okay? We read about that when they, uh, certain ambassadors came uh, around the thing of Jehu, where they had cut them, they shaved their beards, and they cut themselves as a sign of mourning. So right here, crying... <laughs> And what did he do? But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him. I betrayed the innocent blood. Let him go. And cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee? Jesus, thou son of the most high God, I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. I, I, I did. I, I saw that, that comment. It's like, hmm. I, I, I love you, brother. I love you. I, I, I don't know if I agree with that. I don't, I don't know if I agree with that. I, I, I don't agree with that. But that, hey, that's fine. That's all good. That's all good. That's all good. Dear friends, whoever you are, suicide is not your answer. 
Suicide is the ultimate act of selfishness. As a saint, actually a saint, yes, you'll go to heaven to be with the Lord for eternity. But he's going to be ashamed of you for all eternity. You will be one of those vessels on the dishonor. How, how could it be otherwise when you as a saint trust that your problems are bigger than the Lord who you serve? And you lost people? You think your problems are bad now? We have no idea. You know, our time is short. You are not God. And you don't, as a saint, have any right to take his place to say that you have finished your course when he has otherwise to say about it. You understand? It's going to be it for this video. I love you. If any of you are in this kind of position, you, you need to really stop and think. Because the permanence of the light affliction, your permanent solution to something that's here today and gone tomorrow, what you need to consider. Thank you for watching this if you do. I love you. See you in the next video.